Hi, boys and girls. Are you in a good spot? Are you feeling comfortable and ready to listen to a read aloud with me today? Did you get a stuffy? I've got twigs here. All right, let's get started. Here's the front cover of the book I want to read to you today. It's called The Watcher. The Watcher, and it's by Jeanette Winter. The Watcher. Jane Goodall's Life with the Chimps. Oh, look. There's Jane, and who's she holding? Jubilee. Ready for the story? Jane! Jane! Where are you? Jane, can you hear me? Everyone had been searching for hours and hours, looking for little Valerie Jane Goodall. Then, from the hen house, came Jane running to her mother, shouting, oh, I know how eggs come out! At five years old, Jane was already a watcher. Jane watched all the animals in her world, big and small, earthworms, insects, birds, cats, dogs, and horses. Jane quietly watched an English robin at her window for days and weeks. She, she saw him come closer and closer and then into her room to eat some crumbs off her bed. When spring came, the robin even came and built a nest in Jane's bookshelf. Perched high in her favorite beech tree, Jane read aloud Dr. Doolittle talking to the animals and Tarzan living with the apes in Africa. She wanted to go to Africa too and talk to the animals and live with the apes. Do you ever do this, climb a tree to read books? My son Zach used to love to do that. He had a favorite tree and a favorite spot and he would climb right up in and read. When Jane's school days were over, she worked and saved to buy a ticket to Kenya. She hid her earnings under the parlor rug for safe keepings. She's working. Don't save her money. Crossing the ocean, Jane stayed on deck and watched the waves. Even when the cold wind blew, she saw all the different blues and greens of the sea and fish that glowed through the dark water. As Jane stepped onto dry land, she closed her eyes in joy. Jane looked for work with the animals. A famous scientist, Louis Leakey, was looking for someone to watch and study chimpanzees to help understand the animals most like. Would Jane be interested? Yes, she would. Jane traveled to the place in Tanzania where the chimps lived, Gombe. I wanted to learn things that no one else knew. Undercover secrets, she wrote. She set up camp far from any human dwellings. That first night, Jane lay still awake, listening to all the sounds. Did you ever camp outside like that and listen to all the sounds that are happening out in the forest or out under the trees? The croak of a frog, the hum of crickets, the laugh of hyena, the hoot of an owl, and looking up at the stars. Oh, she knew she was home. I love to do that, too. At dawn, Jane walked into the forest. Up high, she found a peak to watch from. Every day, she climbed to the peak to look for chimps. But though she could hear their pant hoot calls to one another, she didn't see them. Jane walked down into the forest, hoping a chimp would appear. Still, the curious chimps stayed hidden. Secretly, they would watch Jane. When will I see a chimp, she wondered. Can you find any in there? Then Jane fell ill with malaria, laying in her tent, burning with a fever. She almost lost hope. Oh, look at her laying in her tent. She's not feeling good. But when the fever left her body, she tried again to get close to the chimps. More weeks and months passed till one day the chimps let Jane see them. She stayed in the background, never hid, acted uninterested, and just quietly watched. She's just observing. 
so they feel safe. Now Jane watched every day, all day. <laughs> she huddled in the rain. She saw the chimps accept the rain, not look for shelter as we do. As she kept notes about it all, you have to be patient if you want to learn about animals, she wrote. That's good to know. I know a lot of you like to learn about animals. So Jane's telling you, you have to be patient. So you're sitting in the rain watching. Some nights Jane even slept on the peak to be near the tree where the chimps were sleeping. She woke at dawn and saw them slowly rise from their nests, sit for a spell, and then go off to find food. So here she is in her spot and just waiting to observe them to see what they do in the morning. Wow. Jane named the chimps. To her, each one was different, just like us. A gray-bearded chimp was the first to approach Jane. She named him David Graybeard. David Graybeard has, yes, he has taken bananas from my hand. So gently, never snatching, she wrote. David Graybeard let Jane come close. She watched him shape a stick into a tool to dig for termites. Before this, nobody knew that wild animals could make a tool. She watched David Graybeard eat meat, and before this, everybody thought chimps only ate plants. So she's learning so many things just by watching. Remember the name of the book? The Watcher. It's a pretty good name for her. And because David Graybeard trusted Jane, now the other chimps let Jane come close too. Chimps all around me. What a day, she wrote. Chimps near, chimps far, old men, young men. Ladies, children, babies, teenagers, the whole lot. Wow, that would be amazing. Jane watched the chimps when they were happy. She saw them hold hands and hug and kiss and laugh, just like us. She watched the chimps when they were angry or scared and their hair stood on end. She saw them swagger and throw tantrums and kept out of the way just watched. Jane watched the chimps at Com Kakombe Waterfall, leaping and sw swinging in the awe and wonder of the tumbling water. See her watching? At night, after a supper of beans and tomatoes and onions, Jane listened to Mozart and Bach and she wrote up her notes from the day. Those are classical composers. Years of notes were piled high everywhere. Jane needed help, and so assistants came to watch and write with her. Wow, look at all the writing. So she likes to listen to calm, quiet music while she's doing her writing too. That's cool. One day, Jane sadly left Gombe. All across Africa, forests were being cut down and the chimps were losing their home. Poachers were shooting grown chimps and kidnapping their babies to sell to laboratories, to the circus, and even pets. Oh no, Jane's beloved chimpanzees were in danger and becoming extinct. They needed Jane to speak for them. Uh-oh. Jane hated to leave her friends, but she knew she must. She traveled to big cities and small towns the world over, month after month, year after year, asking for help to save the chimps and the forest. Jane returned to the forest of Gombe where she could, when she could, whenever she could. She climbed up to the peak, calling hello to the streams and hills and trees, David Graybeard at her side. Oh, he remembered her. That's so cool. Look at this illustration. Isn't that beautiful? Jane watched and listened again to the pan hoot calls of her friends. And when she went back to civilization to speak for the chimps, Jane carried with her the peace of this forest. So she took the peacefulness that she feels when she's there with her when she would travel. 
the forest in Gombe where she talked to the animals like Dr. Doolittle and walked unafraid like Tarzan. And she watched and wrote and opened a window for us to the world of the chimpanzees. Opened a window for us. That's a metaphor for what she's doing for us. It's like she's opening the window to to the life of the chimpanzees so we can see in and be a watcher like she is and share what she's seen and share what she's learned and speak up for them. Isn't that cool? Okay. Hmm. Great book. What was your favorite part? What were you like? Whoa, what? That's awesome. I love that page. Or wow, when Jane did that, that was so cool. Or that was funny when they were looking for her in the chicken coop and she came out of the chicken coop. So what, what part was your favorite part? I want you to think about the events that happened in this story. And then I want you to turn and talk to your home teacher about your favorite part. And then when you're finished sharing with your home teacher and they share with you, if you'd like, you can hear my favorite part. All right. I hope you enjoyed this story with me, the watcher today. I really enjoyed reading to you. I miss that so much.